Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a Diophantine equation from Romania. We have 1 over 2x plus 1 over 3y equals 1 over 4 and we're looking for integer solutions. So let's go ahead and take a look. I'm going to start off by making a common denominator. Let's go ahead and make one. You can actually simplify this a little bit if you want. Divide by 2, you're going to get a 3 here, and you're going to get a 2 here. And after that, I can just go ahead and cross multiply. I get 3xy equals, I'm going to multiply this expression by 2. So that's going to become 6y plus 4x. Now I'd like to write everything on the same side. So let's go ahead and put everything on the left hand side. 3xy minus 6y minus 4x is equal to 0. Now, we're going to be solving this problem by factoring, and we're going to use grouping. Uh, there's a technique called uh, Simon's favorite factoring trick, which is also known as, as FFT, but I usually call it Simon. And in this case, we can kind of take out a 3y here. 6 is divisible by 3, so this is not, this is actually pretty straightforward. So what I'm going to do is, you can definitely proceed like this, but I would like to switch to show you what that looks like if there's, uh, you know, none of these are divisible by uh, 3, for example. So this is a good case. Now, we can take out an x, but I want to have a coefficient of uh, y. So I want to have 1 for coefficient of y. That's why instead of taking out an x, I'm going to take out a 3x. Let, let me show you what that means. You can take out a y. You can take out 3x, and then inside the parentheses, you're going to get y minus. Now, what should I multiply 3x by to get 4x? The answer is 4 thirds. And then I should be doing the same thing here, but notice that we have a 6y. So if I take out a 6, and I should be getting a y here. Since I'm going to use factoring by grouping, uh, it makes sense if I, I'm able to subtract 4 thirds from y. So the question here is, what should I multiply or what should I have or add to both sides? So in other words, I want to have a question mark here and just, you know, make it factorable. But that should be a four-thirds. So let's go ahead and write it there. So I have zero on the right-hand side, but since I'm adding this to both sides, which is six times four-thirds, and that's actually equivalent to eight. So in other words, I'm adding eight to both sides. Make sense? Now, y minus 4 thirds is a common factor. And then the other factor is 3x minus 6. And the right-hand side is 8. Great. Not so great because we do have a 3 here, but what we can do is we can take out a 3 here and multiply it by y minus 4 thirds. That's going to give us something nicer. If you distribute the 3, and even if we didn't have a 3 here, we could still take care of it by multiplying both sides by 3. So that would work. We can distribute the 3 over the y minus 4 thirds. That gives us 3y minus 4 multiplied by x minus 2 equals 8. Great. Now, in this equation, our goal is to, you know, find factors of 8 because x and y are integers. So if x is an integer, x minus 2 is an integer. Therefore, that needs to be a div divisor of 8 or a factor of 8. And 8 is 2 to the third power, so it has 4 positive and 4 negative factors. And those are 1, 2, 4, and 8 with the plus minus signs. Like this. So there's 8 factors. We're going to consider each one. For example, we have the following pairs, like 3y minus 4 can be 8, and y minus 2 can be 1, so that their product is 8. But this gives us y equals 4 and... Actually, the second one should be x. So let me erase that. Y, three, y equals 4 and x equals 3. So 3 comma 4 is a valid solution. Uh, and we're just going to proceed like this. But the problem with that is 3y minus 4, if you set 3y minus 4 is uh, like, let's say, to 4, then from here, y is not going to be an integer. So we don't have to consider that case. Even though x is going to be an integer, y is not going to be an integer. So this is not going to give us solutions because... This is going to be y equals 8 thirds, and we don't want that. So we're going to skip those cases. Let's take a look at the next one, which is 2. In this case, I get y equals 2, 
and this means x minus 2 is equal to 4 because remember their product needs to be 8 and from here x is equal to 6 and we get 6 comma 2 another solution if 3y minus 4 becomes 1 this doesn't give us a negative solution I mean this doesn't give us an integer solution so we're gonna skip that so we're done with the positives let's go ahead and go through the negatives if this is equal to negative 8 if you add 8 uh, 4 to both sides y is not gonna be an integer so we skip that case if this we set this equal to negative 4 from here y becomes 0 and x minus 2 equals negative 2 is also going to give you x equals 0 so 0 comma 0 is another valid, valid solution I'm gonna put these together uh, at the end and write the solution set okay the next case we're gonna be looking at is 3y minus 4 is equal to negative 2 but in this case if you add 4 to both sides you get 3y equals 2 and that's definitely not going to give you an integer solution so the last case we're going to be looking at is negative 1 and from here you get 3y equals 3 which means y equals 1 and if x minus 2 is equal to negative 8 from here you're going to get x equals negative 6 so we get the negative 6 comma 1 from here and that's going to be the last solution and there are no other solutions because we considered all cases where 8 can be factored into. So let's go ahead and put this all together and we're, gonna, we're just going to wrap it up. So our solution set is going to be made up of negative 6, 1, 3, 4, and 6, 2. So that's pretty much going to be all the solutions, right? There is three solutions. They're all integers. So what is that supposed to mean in terms of the, uh, the graph of this function? You can definitely graph this as a function and you're going to get y equals something. We're going to take a look at that real quick. But uh, that's going to be like, a, uh, I believe it's going to be like a rational function, like a hyperbola. And you're going to be looking for lattice points. Lattice points are points uh, with integer coordinates. And not, uh, there aren't that many of them on this curve. All right, great. So some functions obviously contain... Uh, much more than this one, especially the linear functions, right, is going to contain infinitely many of them. So let's go ahead and take a look at this from a functional perspective, kind of like try to solve for y from here. We can just go ahead and make a common denom denominator like before. So that would look like 3y minus 3y plus 2x over 6xy equals 1 fourth. And if you go ahead and cross multiply or just simplify again like before, you're going to get 3xy equals well, actually, you, couldn't, you know what? I could probably do the following. Let's go ahead and isolate y here. 1 over 3y equals 1 over 4y minus 1 over 2x. Make a common denominator, multiply by x, and multiply by 2. So that's going to be x minus 2 over 4x. And if you flip both sides, 3y is going to become 4x over x minus 2. And if you divide both sides by 3, you're going to get y equals 4x divided by 3x minus 6. So that's the rational function we're looking at and if you kind of try to break it down obviously you can do a couple different things you can kind of take out a four thirds and then write this as you know x over x minus two and then you can kind of write this as x minus two plus two over x minus two always multiply that by four thirds and this is going to give you one plus two over x minus two and that is going to be four thirds and so on and so forth so you can proceed in proceed in many different ways but the main idea is you know just making it factorable and finding the integer values from there and this brings us to the end of this video thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please let me know don't forget to comment like and subscribe i'll see you tomorrow with another video until then be safe take care and bye bye